we've spent some time talking about the, the logarithmic function, right? Then the natural log and then logs of arbitrary bases. And we also spent some time talking about the idea of inverse functions. And it's natural that we'd want to mix those things together. So what you find is that if you have this graph of the natural log of x, its domain is from 0 to infinity, not inclusive, and its range is all real numbers. So it kind of goes all the way down to negative infinity and all the way up to positive infinity. But what you notice is that it never doubles back or anything like that. It would pass that horizontal line test. So it's strictly monotone, so it's just always increasing, and it's one to one, and that's on its entire domain. So as a result, we have a guaranteed inverse of this function. So since it has a guaranteed inverse, we might want to ask ourselves, okay, well, what, what is that inverse? And so to do that, what we're going to have to do is recall the properties of inverses. The first one is that f of its inverse is equal to x. Remember, inverses kind of undo each other. You take the inverse transformation, and then you pass that through the original transformation, and you get back where you started. So you're just kind of going in a loop. Well... If our original function is the natural log, then another way to rewrite this is natural log of some inverse, some unknown inverse, is equal to x. But another thing to realize is that the natural log is log base e, and that that thing is equal to x. Okay, so I'm going to make an assumption here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, what if I take that number e and I raise it to the x power? So in that case, the x it's not like x squared where the, the base is changing and you're squaring it. In this case, the base is e and you're changing the power you're raising it to. So if I put that inside the natural log, log base e of e, and I use the rules for logarithmic functions, I can pull that x to the front. And then I have x times log base e of e. And if you remember the other rule of logs for arbitrary bases, is that if the base and the argument match, this is just equal to 1. So we have x times 1, which is x. So what that tells me is that the natural log of e to the x is x, which satisfies our original inverse condition. Basically what that's saying is that e to the x is the inverse of the natural log, which is a really nice consequence because you have a positive number uh, and we haven't discussed this, but it's like 2.71828 or something, and then some change. It's a transcendental number, which means not only is it irrational, but it has some additional properties as well. But <clears throat> anyway, you have this e to the x. It's an inverse. So if I were to graph it, instead of looking like this, you could take that y equals x line and flip it over. So it's actually going to ride the line here and then go off into positive infinity. And there's plenty of graphs out there for e to the x if you want to look it up. And just as a simple reminder, since e to the x is an exponential, you have these exponential properties. So e to one power times e to another power is e to those powers added together. And often you actually use it the other way. You split it out like this. You start with something like this and you split it out. Um, if you have e to the power divided by e to another power, you can turn that into the subtraction of powers. That's really just this property with this thing rewritten with a negative exponent instead. And then finally, if you have e to a power and then in parentheses raised to another power, you can represent that as two powers together. Uh, either one is often convenient to switch between. Generally speaking, you're going to go from right to left on these properties. Not always, but generally. That's kind of the way you, you solve problems. And we're going to set up some explicit problems to get us more comfortable with dealing with this natural exponential function and, and how we can put it in practice.